Hi guys, so today I'm going to try out Spellbinder's new um, Glimmer of the Month for August of 2023. I did realize in the perfect package unboxing, I didn't show the foil it comes with, and I actually don't have it on me. I think it's something pink. I don't know if it's this one, but I did grab blush just to have it so it's similar, but uh, they usually say in the um, listing that um, you always do a foil roll. Sometimes it'll tell you which color and uh, the color that's intended for that month, like Aura or, you know, Brass or whatever, but um, I don't recall it showing that in the listing, and then, like I said, I didn't have it to show it to you, so I just grabbed one from my stash, but I think it's supposed to be a pink one. We will see. Um, and these items were sent free of charge from my review, and of course, all opinions are my own. A links down in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you were purchased items to those links, so thank you for using them if you would like. The club's open for people to sign up on the 6th. They actually opened a little bit later in the day on the 5th, but uh, so they're available for that, or if you're already a member, you would have already made your changes, because if you don't make your changes by the 5th, then you will be charged for whatever it is that you're signed up for, and then... Um, they'll send out shortly after that, right? And if you're new, you can sign up till basically the last week of the month is blacked out. And uh, once you're a member, you get 10% off the site, and of course you're in the membership, right? The monthly um, club. You can cancel it at any time, and you can, well, basically cancel, because <laughs> it used to be that you can skip or like edit it in, in a certain way, but now you just cancel whatever it is that you don't want, and add whatever it is that you do want, that kind of thing. All right, but I already did the, like I said, perfect package unboxing, so I talked about this. This is a big 4x6 um, plate, which is really nice, so obviously you can cut it down if you want, you know. I'm going to make a 5x7 today, which is not something I usually do, um, but that's what we're going to try out today. It does come with a sentiment, and then I talked about the add-on stencil, which I will use today because I do have it here, so I'm sure you guys want to see it in action, so we'll use that today. There are four stencils. I have not seen that this is available in the UK, so I don't know what's going on there, but if it does become available, I'll update the links uh, to include that. Again, I'm going to use the blush foil. And oh my goodness, so tongue-tied already. So, because this is a large plate, I thought well, I'll run it through again also with my glimmer. With um, either this plate or possibly this one. I haven't used this one. Um, Spellbinders came out with this not too long ago. It is the solid hexy gem shape. This also has... Um, a nesting die set, as you can see from tiny, I mean, all the way up, so you can have that um, along with it. This one actually came from the August 2022 um, Glimmer set. So this is basically the foil that you have left over. You can use this plate to foil with, right? So I just grabbed this. I was cleaning up today. I found all kinds of little foil pieces, but generally what I do is I keep them in like a little bucket like this or this guy. And I mean, there's just lots of stuff in here. All these pieces, these overfoil, yeah, what, not overfoiling, but what you have left, you can use with something like that. So, like, this is a big guy. And if you put this there, then you're going to have the gold with the paper showing through in the, where the image was, right? The transfer there. So, you know, I keep these guys just in case. So I have all those guys, and this one I can pop in here. So today we'll do that with what's left over. It is going to be a large um, image left over. I'm going to grab my glimmer, which is just over here, and I bring it around here, and bring it around town, and turn it on. It's always plugged in, so I just turn it on. Once you turn it on, you know, your little lights come on, and you know it's ready when this light is green. And then you press a timer whenever you actually place your image there or whatever that you're going to be working with. Let me move these guys for now. And we're not going to use that right now, so I'll put those to the side. We will need this. I don't know if I'm going to use this sentiment today, but um, it does say, hope all is well with you. And I had said I've never really heard that sentiment, and somebody said that they used to use it a lot back in the day, which is really nice. So I like it, and I like the sentiment. Um, and I, you know, I didn't even talk about it. <laughs> the glimmer this month is called Overflowing Floral, and so is the dye, um, the coordinating stencil, sorry. So, what I have is a 5x7 card base. It's like this cream color, which is very pretty, and it's ready to go, but if you're making your own, you definitely want it to be 7x10, and you score it at 5 inches on the 10-inch side. This piece of paper is just some heavyweight cardstock. Um, you want to use the smoothest paper you can for your best, you know, foiling. Um, but I'm going to put this guy like right here, right? And so this piece of uh, cardstock, I believe I did a quarter inch smaller. Yeah, so it's roughly four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And then we need a piece of our glimmer foil. 
and like I said, I believe it's a color like this this month. Now, this side, if you scratch it, that's where the actual foiling is, so you don't want to mess that up. But at the same time, I do want to see what I'm doing over here. So I'm going to hold this very carefully. And I always just get as much foil as I need to cover the plate just barely. Because if you have any extra foil, you can get some overfoiling and stuff like that. But let's see. And I'm going to cut this whole thing off. And then this other piece that's left over here. Actually, I'm going to turn it this way for now. Just be careful with it. Um... Just the way it's curling, it's better this way. I did get the little foiling, the foil cutter, and I should bring that out. <laughs> but here we are. Okay, so I mean that's close enough without getting too, too much. Again, be careful. I will put this guy to the side here. Oh, thank goodness I've been cleaning up because I just had a lot of fun things here next to me. <laughs> I need that work, uh, space to work, you know? So I like to just put everything down the way I want it so when you're doing that if you're building on your card or your topper or whatever you need the paper then you need the the color the pretty side facing you because then your plate pushes into that right and so we just have that right there and I'm just kind of eyeballing where do I want this that's probably good it's giving me a little room here oh let's see I'm missing a spot there so let's move this guy over and hopefully we have the whole design on here. A little bit that way. Actually, I just want to move the plate more than anything. Okay. And something like that. Just want to see how straight that is. I'm looking at the little branch down here. Okay. So, and then you can put some tape. And Spellbinders is a thing called the hinge method where you kind of hinge this with tape and then you slide your foil underneath. And I just do it this way, you know whatever you like. This is still warming up, so I'll wait for that. And then we're gonna foil this, and then with the foil that we have left over, we're gonna use one of those little plates. And I brought out some black paper, if I can find it, here it is. And I'm just gonna foil it on here, and you know, hopefully we'll have some good luck. This is just the random piece of paper that was in my stash, and hopefully it's smooth enough and it'll look really nice. Probably this side of the black paper. All right, well, whenever this uh, light turns on, we will get going. There we go. And if you're building this up on your platform, on your glimmer or whatever machine you use, you definitely want the metal plate touching the surface facing up. Your foil at that point will be the silver side facing you when you lay it down and then your paper, right? Um, so I'm going to put this guy right down the center. I'm hoping the whole thing is touching. I like to put this on top right now. You don't have to do that. I use both plates, the fiberglass one and the you know, space pad there and then press timer and I'll let that go and I usually give it like another five seconds after the timer turns off just um, or it stays still should I say just because that's what I like to do but I'll be back and then we'll run it through the platinum six so the light just turns solid and like I said I'd like to give it a few more seconds I don't know for good luck one to grow on <laughs> there we go and I'll bring that out and I'm very careful with it because um, I put my plates on top to begin with. Some people like to put their plates afterwards, and that's fine. And we're gonna run it through the Platinum 6 slowly. I was gonna pick it up like that, but that's okay. Oh, look at that. It's already detaching for me. <laughs> um, and sounds great, looks great. I can see that really well. Ooh, a little hot, a little hot, a little hot. Sorry guys, I'm gonna bring it over here. Can... There we go. I mean, look at that. <laughs> it came off for me. Uh, a little over foiling, so we'll take care of that in just a minute. But again, that's why I like to keep my foil real close to the shape. Um, let me take this away from this. We're going to use this guy again in just a minute. This guy is really warm, so I'm going to put him over here on my heat pad. Or pad, I don't know what you want to call it. Because he is hot. Okay. Now, platform is already ready. I plugged it back in because I want to use it again in just a second here. 
And I don't know how quickly you can go from one to the next, but if you're going to do a card topper, obviously you would make this the shape that you want and all that kind of stuff. But for now, I mean, oh, it's so pretty and so much of this. But what I'm going to do is, let's see how big this is. So maybe I can use both like the top and the bottom of the foil, you know what I'm saying? Because this isn't as big as that design. So maybe I can do a couple designs. But, you know, it just depends on what you have going on here. Let me take this tape off. I think it stayed on here and I don't want that to stay on there. Let me take that off and I'll be right back. Let's do something fun. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You're just looking to use this design at all. So basically, if I put this on here like this, I can still get a good amount of that design on there and then I can use this bottom one maybe with uh, a different shape because we do have a few different of these guys. So I'm going to trim it this way so just get that little bit. I'm going to put it on here because I do have the die to cut this down if I want to. So let's put that down and I'm making it in this direction but I mean you can you can literally place this however you want honestly maybe like that. <laughs> Look at that. Even better. Okay, so I'll place that there, and we'll tape it down, and then I'll place it back on here for how many seconds. Again, turning it over so that the foil, the metal is touching your plate there. We're going to pop this on here, because that's what I like to do. I'm going to press timer, and then when a timer turns off, or it's solid, should I say, I will run it through. Now, I can pop this back in my little tub with the other guys, and then this guy... I just have a white eraser right now. This is just a plain old eraser. I usually use one that has like a little bit of sand, those sand erasers. But all you do is erase away the overfoiling. Um, and it comes away pretty nicely, like this little bit over here. And sometimes if you've noticed if you foiled and something looks a little bit rough, like, oh, I can still see like some little feathering from the foiling. All you do is just take an eraser and rub over the top and it'll take it away because it basically pushes it in. It's like a letter press with foil, right? So if you rub over the top, you're not going to damage your foiling because it's pushed into your paper. It's recessed, right? Um, and that's that. Okay, I'll wait for this one. I'll run it through and I'll come back. Check it out. Now, sometimes I will get a little um, <laughs> condensation which I did get. I'm going to roll it once. I'm going to roll it back through just because that's a bigger thick plate. Let's see what happens. Okay. See, they got some water um, because it's just a big plate. Ooh, my goodness. Hot. And I mean, look at that. Again, this is just a scrap paper. It wasn't even like specialty paper or anything to write home about. Let me take that away from there. Let's turn this guy off. And this plate is hot, hot, hot. But I do want to show you kind of what's left, so I'm going to be careful with it. Look at that. Absolutely clean <laughs> right onto my paper. So this now, I mean, honestly, you probably have a sentiment that you can run with that. Save your foil, guys. Um, let me put this stuff away and I'll be right okay, back. Guys. So we have this piece. Again, I have the dies that go along with this to coordinate with this. So like if I wanted to, I'll find the right sized one and I can cut that out. I didn't put it on here as a card topper. I would just put it on here as an example. And then, you know, you can put your sentiment. You have a background. I mean, how gorgeous is that? Lovely. So I'll put that to the side for now. Maybe afterwards I'll finish up and, you know, make a different card. But for now, what we're going to do is concentrate on the stenciling. So let's bring this guy back. And we have our piece here. Let's put this guy away. Lots of things going on. And they're numbered one through four. Of course, you do whatever you like, whatever order you like. Um, you know, I'm gonna look through this and see, like this number one, I can see it has some greenery and it has some leaves. And, you know, I'm just matching it up with my own like eyeballs at this point. But it does have, um, I suppose, registration marks, but they aren't cut out, so. I'm not sure how that's, uh, well, I guess what it is, is if you have a piece of paper that's this size that fits in these marks, you'll have registration marks to help you with that. And, you know, even though my paper is a little bit smaller than 5 by 7 I put the die in the way that I wanted, so I'm going to have to eyeball this every time I do this. So, like, right now, this is number one, and I can see, again, there's some leaves in here, there's a little bit of flower, and stuff like that. So I'm going to place this right here and actually it's just like this, kind of sideways is what I'm doing. I'm going to tape this down and I'm going to find some colors that I want to work with and I will be so right back. I have some pretty colors. I'm going to start with light colors. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's just whatever you want. So like some of the greenery is here, some of the greenery is on this next one. And then there's accent colors on your flower. So 
you know, it just depends on what you're looking to do. But I have this really light green. And so I'm going to come in here and just kind of add a little color there on the greenery. They are spaced out enough that I don't feel like, oh no, I'm actually going to, you know, color this when I don't want to or whatever. So let's put that there. In here. And I'm just being kind of light and fun about it. And then in here, right? Um, so that's green. Let's see about like a pinkish color. I don't know if I've used pink in here, so let's use this guy. I saw some examples where you just kind of color at the very base and it looks really pretty, like just adding a little color here, like this. And I, I like that, so that's what I'm going to do. Just a little something right at the very center area. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Let me bring this down just a little bit, guys. And if you do that, you can add, add in another color. Let's say you want to add a little yellow accent or something, or like a creamy colored accent, you can definitely do that. So again, I'm doing just the smallest amount of, of pink. That was number one. Now number two, I should pay attention to what I'm taping because I'm keeping the topper intact and I don't want my tape to damage. My topper. Okay, so definitely I wash these off pretty quickly, especially if you're using hybrid inks or inks that are very pigmented, sometimes will um, want to stay. <laughs> so just know that. Number two, uh, this time it's going to be the accents of the um, flowers. So I'm just going to kind of pay attention to that, where that positioning is. Just eyeball to see the other ones are in a good spot, and that looks really great. So maybe I'm going to tape down here, not so much on my card surface this time. And I did not pick out new colors, but let's say here's a green. <laughs> I always use like green and pinks and things, so those are always kind of available next to me. And here's the next green array that I'll be adding. That looks like a leaf to me, but it might have been a flower. <laughs> so uh, I'm thinking it's greenery. Yeah, I'm kind of starting like the bottom area and kind of going up when I color, so that way it's kind of similar to what's going on with the flowers. But that is definitely a darker green. And let me grab like a reddish, ooh, maybe this one. It's called uh, Rich Rosewood. Sounds good. That was much deeper than what I used first. Let's grab this guy. And again, this one I can see if it can lift up possibly, this little piece. I don't know if you can see my finger under there, so just be careful when you come in to use that one. Okay, there we go. A little something there. I'm not going to dip much more because this is very rich. This color <laughs> was not joking. Where it said rich. Okay, so around here. Pretty. So let's see what that one's looking like. I'm probably going to rinse these off because like I said, I rinse them pretty quickly after I use them. It's not the biggest deal. Obviously stencils get stained. It's not going to affect the stencil, but oh, look at that. That richer color and then the light kind of pink. I'll rinse back. those off. And let's see where we're at. Next stencil, number three. Looks like it's going to do the little berries and then the flower centers. So just eyeballing that. Again, I don't have registration marks because I just kind of started in a fun way. But I'm just paying attention to where I can see the gold and things like that. So this can go here. And this one can go here. And all right, so I need like a brown color um, or something for that middle. And then these little berries that maybe can do, be like a, I don't know, I'm doing pinky, red. Let's try this one. It's kind of a deep colored berry. Actually, that might be nice for the centers too, but I'm going to go with like a brown. And these guys, I'm just coloring them so they stand out a little more because they are small, so I'm completely coloring those in. Oh, I said that was brown, didn't I? I used red. Oh, here we go. How about just a brown that I have here? Oh, gold ink would be cute too. So again, I'm going to go kind of light with this one. I don't want it to be too, too noticeable. Since we did such a light job on the petals, you know. So there's a little brown. Oh, that's so pretty already. And then 
what do we have left here? This is number four. It looks like it has some of the stem. I don't know if you can see the stem here. And these leaves have not been colored yet. So we can go in there and I'm just lining that up again as best I can. Uh, that looks really great. Let's see where we're at over here. That looks good. All right. Looks like here would be good. And another green. So let's go with this kind of lime green. Let's see if it's different from the other greens I've used. Right there. All this. And of course you can do different colors in these different spots. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and add in my greenery on these last couple bits here. I love when Spellbinders makes a stencil to color in their glimmer looks. Look at that guys. How rich and pretty is that? Super gorgeous. Okay, let me clean up and I'll be right back. So again, like I said, I made this 5x7. This is so pretty. I mean, you can definitely go around the edges and like ink it, but I love how crisp and clean it is. Um, I have my card base here, and I think I'm just going to put that right on there. Maybe we'll add some little like doodads. <laughs> um, maybe some of these new enamels, enamel dots I have here. I also recently received from Spellbinders some um, Vivant um, like ribbons and like fibers and things. So keep an eye out for that. I do want to show you um, all these gorgeous new things and just really pretty ribbons. Look like looks like satin ribbons and some twine type things, baker's twine and some other kind of fibers. So uh, that's always nice to add in, you know, wrap it around, different things that you want, might want to do. And um, I was just going to grab some sentiments I have here from whenever I had reviewed the uh, Better Press uh, one of the first times. I mean, how pretty is this, right? You're my everything. I mean, always and forever. There's something, there's a sentiment for everyone. Hopefully this sentiment set is back because I know it sold out really fast. Um, we love having sentiments you just crank out like you brighten my day and this one's on gray paper but it looks really nice um, I'm thinking I have something like this to send so this one says sending strength and it has that beautiful kind of mustardy yellow and I think that looks really nice so I'm gonna pop that here and let me put some dimensionals on the back of that and that will be our card for today I'll be right back I strategically place some um, dimensionals on that and pop that right in there just gonna see what straight looks like that's straight. looks pretty good okay have that and then let's grab these guys and look how cute I was like oh there's some clear ones here and there right it just is a little something but this coordinate really well too even you know with the colors that I chose so let's do something like this and we'll just add a few here and there and generally I just kind of, let's say we pop that one there, sure, and then maybe some of this lighter pink here and here, something like that, and then I'll do the same thing towards the top, and maybe I'll use this bigger one somewhere uh, right over here, and then we'll go with the smaller, okay, and a smaller one. Right there. Just a little something. Pop a color there. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you so much for all my for these items for review. I'll have images coming up. Um, I'll have the links in the description box. Against this. Against? <laughs> Again. This is the new August 2023 uh, Glimmer of the Month with the add on um, stencil. And um, yeah, check out, you know, every day I usually. Once my videos start rolling out on the 5th or 6th, you know, after doing the unboxing on the 1st, I have a tutorial for you guys every day. So please check those out if you would like to. And um, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.
Thank you.